What's up, guys? How are you? Once again, good morning to everyone. This is a you know brand new day. It's a beautiful day. It's me, your boy Hebot, your video game aficionado. And this video I wanna do real quick is to talk about my thoughts on why. I feel that that Microsoft should buy Sega and why would it be a good thing for Microsoft to buy Sega and please forgive me for the lens flare you see that I got hardware running right in my car yeah look at that lens flare that's all real baby real time now, no ray tracing. Um, yeah, guys. So, yeah. I want to talk about it because there's some ramblings and rumors and speculations going on. It's been going on for quite a while. And to be honest, you know, usually when there's smoke, there's fire. But at the same time, with something like Sega, it's kind of really hard to, to believe that a company like Microsoft will acquire them because, let's be real, they're Japanese. And Sega has been very reliant, very reliant in the last couple of years, you know, primarily on PlayStation, right, in their console. For whatever reason, they just keep giving them a lot of exclusivities, a lot of first party deals, whatever. Third party deals, whatever. And even on Nintendo's consoles, some stuff as well. But one of the reasons why I feel, or the main reason I feel that Sega would be a very good acquisition for, for Microsoft is because they have a lot of pedigree and history and historical value in gaming for innovations and making the greatest and most unique games of all time to be made into game form and be extremely fun, extremely creative, right? And their backlog catalog is extensive, very massive, and a lot of it hasn't been touched in many many years right a lot of it and a lot of the titles that appear to the western market right has been lately coming out through other developers because they're licensing these IPs out giving these developers permission like they did with Streets of Rage 4 and like they did with Panzer Dragoon remake, which supposedly is coming to Xbox this holiday season, right? And PS4. Like they're doing early next year, I believe, with the Alex Kid remake, which I'm excited for. I want to see how how they transition that. You know, from you know, especially if they fix the gameplay mechanics to not feel as floaty as the original. And what they're going to do, obviously, with the, you know, with the artwork and, and the graphics and that new style, and if they're going to add new stuff. Because Alex Kidd is one of those games that really has a lot of uniqueness, different clean play styles, has a lot of different ideas that have never been done in any game before, or that started it, and you see it in other games now, and people don't really give him credit for it. And he was really one of the first... 2D side scrolling mascots uh, in the scene. I think, you know, to be honest, I think even before Super Mario Brothers came out on the Nintendo, I think it was a thing that he was out in Japan. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but it was on the same time range. He was one of those that was there, but he wasn't giving out for free like Mario. And people got him for free and discovered him because he was giving out for free. He, you actually had to buy the game and Alex get a miracle. So, I really want this to be a reality because 
Sega is lacking in two departments. That being creativity to be able to create brand new IPs that are original and that, you know, uh, are triple A quality, right? Which they did a lot of new stuff in the 360 area. And they started this gen pretty strong, but kind of faded away because I guess they didn't make enough income from the games with Toomba, the badass elephant, and with Aliens Isolation, which are both really good games, really solid. They're, they're up there as far as uh, hidden gems, right? They're very good games. So, after that, you saw that they just went back. Same old thing. You know, basically, that does whatever numbers it does for them. You know, like the Yakuza series. Then they made it, you know, a, a game that was kind of a side story from the Yakuza universe, which is Judgment. Or making games like, you know, um, Valkyrian Chronicles, bringing that back out. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, with the Fantasy Star series coming back out, and as of lately, you've seen that they've been more on the Xbox console, bringing more stuff through Game Pass. But I tell people the reason for that is mainly because Microsoft pays up front to the developers to put the games on Game Pass, so they're making money right off the beginning from that deal. And then as it sells copies, make money off of that. And if people download them, they make a certain percentage off of that. Excuse me very much. Still early, tired, hungry, forgive me. Anyway, um, so that's one thing they're lacking, right? And then the other thing they're lacking is uh, the, the quality of polish and presentation in their games because a lot of their games feel still dated or if they feel good in quality in one part or one section they kind of feel dated and old and lackluster in another section which is why I don't really like Yakuza because you know I feel like the quality of the story and the character models is strong but the combat for me feels too ridiculous with not really enough control over it feels more silly and not really uh, robust for example or you know like the Sonic Forces for example the Sonic games um, that, are, that are in 3D they've changed them so many times that they can't find that happy medium which me and brother FaZe shout out to Sam we're talking about that not that long ago that one of the things that hurt Sonic is the fact that a lot of the games that they kept making in 3D or 2D always tried to change and present a new formula or a new style of gameplay or look. And it hasn't really stayed with a single unified set um, style and aesthetic. And basically, long term wise, it hurts it because of the fact that it almost feels like every time you get a new Sonic game, they're changing it. They don't stick with what works and what people like and just grow from there and make it better and better, uh, which is what is very pivotal and important for platforming games like that with characters that are iconic like that in the platforming scene. So in order to get that presentation and high quality level of polish in a game, and even creative ideas in, the, in, in games, like new IPs, right? Like they did with Binary Domain and Vanquish alongside with Pat Platinum Games or Mad World or Otagi or Gun Valkyrie back in the OG era. You need money and lots of it, especially since gaming is very expensive in this day and age. And both of those things can be provided both of those things can be provided by one simple thing. And that's, like I just said, capital, money. 
So, having money opens the doors and the windows to everything. While having your creative freedom. Because it gives these developers the, the, you know, the relief of just concentrating on their ideas and what they want to do with the games. And I personally feel, and I know for a fact, as we all know, if Microsoft bought Sega with the type of money that Sega has and giving them the creative, I mean, that Microsoft has and the type of freedom that Microsoft is offering with all their new acquisitions to their developers, Sega can return back to their glory days where they kept making creative and unique games at a very high quality instead of making games that feel like they had good intentions, they had great ideas, but they couldn't be executed at the high level that they're known for throughout their history of gaming because they don't have enough money to back it up or a big enough team in the developers to back them up. And this is something that only a company like that, that like Microsoft can really do. Okay? And maybe Sony could do that, but it's to maybe a smaller, a very smaller extent, nowhere near the level of, 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 of Microsoft. You know, with somebody like Microsoft, they can bring back IPs that have been dormant for eternity and make them at the highest quality, like eSWAT, like, you know, uh, the, the fighting game they did in the arcade, you know, uh, you know, not Golden Axe. It's another beat em up. I forgot the name of it. But, you know, make them really, or like Golden Axe, Ultra Beast, you know what I'm saying? Quartet. Those really classic, iconic titles that we haven't seen a sequel or proper high quality sequels in years. They can bring them all up back, but with ease. And plus, I wouldn't want them to be in Sony's side because Sony is a big part of the reason why they had to get out of the hardware business and that they almost died down or died off completely because Sony really mudslinged them badly once they got on the scene in that generation with the PS1. Um, so I wouldn't want them to, because that'll make them look really like they were weak and that the same people who helped them get to that point now owns them because, you know, they manipulated them and took advantage of them to the point where they just gave in. You know? Like Shamu 3 had no business being exclusive on the PS4 because that wasn't the audience for that game. The audience of that game was the people who bought Dreamcast and played the original. Uh, and, he, and those guys that bought Dreamcast were hardcore Sega fans. The ones that didn't buy it were the ones paying attention to the PlayStation 2 being announced because it was going to have a DVD player or because on paper it was going to be more powerful than anything before. Instead of worrying about what the Dreamcast was offering at launch at such a competitive price point with so many high-quality launch games, peripherals, everything about that console was almost perfection at its finest. So, again, this is not me, me, uh, me saying I prefer Sega on be bought by Microsoft because I want them to take away from Sony. No, it's because the only way Sega could get back to their glory days and to how good they were and the quality of gaming that they provide and that they're capable of is with a company like Microsoft. The money Microsoft could bring to them, opening up their own studio and their buildings, can make Sega change completely for the rest of gaming history. It can bring them right back to the map. And that's why I really want this rumor and this acquisition to become a reality. And I'm doing this video a day before Tokyo Game Show because you know, in Tokyo is the day before us. Today's the 23rd. Tokyo Game Show starts the 25th. So by tonight, it'll be the next day over there. And I'm really hoping 
that it happens or it gets announced that it's happening soon. It will make me feel very happy and I will be in, you know, really, really cemented by the possibilities of Sega coming back to the way they were, um, which I never thought I'd see again in my lifetime at all because I'm already getting older and, you know, maybe I don't have a long time left, but it will be something to see, you know? Um, so that's the reason why I think Sega would be a logical and it would, acquisition it would be uh beneficial not only to microsoft but to sega as a whole as a brand from a historical standpoint you know and point of view especially uh, for them to grow back um because it's guaranteed with microsoft is guaranteed with sony uh it's a it's a, a roll of the dice because sony you know just doesn't have enough capital to make them be where they need to be or where they could be, especially making new creative stuff. They'll probably, you know, keep making, you know, the Yakuza's and things like that, but that's pretty much it. I don't think you'll see them do other new and creative stuff like they did in the 360 era or the OG era, you know? So I really want this to happen. And this is not a video of me saying that they bought them. So please, to you slow pokes and dummies, don't flip it around saying that because it's not it at all. These are my thoughts on why I think it makes sense and it's smart. Um, and I'm really hyped to, 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 to hear some good news like that. I hope it happens. I really do. If it doesn't, well, what can you say? You know, uh, it's like if Capcom got bought by, my, by, by Sony. If I knew Sony had the money and the capital to back them up, it'd be different. I'd be like, yeah, that's good. That's good they bought them. It doesn't matter because we could just buy a PlayStation and play them anyway. You know, but they don't. You know, so Capcom would just stay stagnant, in my opinion. They'll probably make, you're going to make maybe one game a year or one game every two years. So, you know, there's a company that was known to do 20 games in one year and they'll all be quality. That's how their history was. So, you know, that's why I said it doesn't, you know. Plus, it'll just show, like, because they're Japanese companies, they're sticking together. Not because they actually are, uh, you know, doing it for the betterment of Capcom or the gaming industry. Or to make games better in the future. Excuse me, because it's not. You you know it's basically if they buy them at Sony, it's because Sony just want to have bragging rights to say, oh, now you can only play Devil May Cry, or now you can only play Resident Evil on our console, and that's it. That would be the only reason why they would do that. You know? So, that's why I don't really want that to happen. Um, and I know you guys are going to be like, yeah, right. And come in here and try to rebuttal, even though you don't know nothing about history. Don't know anything about how, how things work and how it happened since Sony came on the scene, but it won't matter because you're gonna be wrong. So yeah, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about. That was my thoughts on it. I really want them to 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 do the acquisition and why. You guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. A thumbs down if you didn't like it. And leave me a comment, like I said, of your own personal thoughts about what I'm saying. Share this video with other fans you think might enjoy it. And, you know, if you new to my channel, welcome. If you subscribe to my channel for the first time, thank you very much. Because I know you didn't have to. But remember, if you did, I consider you now part of my family. You know what I'm saying? And... As always, you can find me on social media, on Twitter under Hebop Powerful Gamer, on Instagram under C underscore Respect, and on Xbox you can find me on Hebop Eight or as Hebop 
eight. Yeah. What is space? Anybody? YouTube? You're here, so you found me. <laughs> um. And if you guys ever want to help me out, you know what you can do. You know how to do it. If you ever want to make a donation, you know how you can do it. It would be my honor. It's on the description down below. I don't have to mention it. It's there. You guys know how. So, yeah, man, I hope Sega gets bought. Microsoft, please, make it happen. I really would love this. I really would love to see it. I really would. I really would. Because I think it will be fantastic. Xbox for life like a six that can't be cured. That's my saying. That's my slogan. Don't get triggered, people. It's all in gaming. It's all in good fun. I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Peace.